This is the bike exploit that you need to know about. That's right, I found a secret path that takes you straight to Highway 97 and then Wizard Island. At the beginning of the game, when you first get your bike from Manny, head to Horse Creek Ambush Camp. There's a hidden path that lets you bypass the whole map and hit up Wizard Island for weapons way stronger than what you'd usually get at the start. Weapons that are so good, they'll turn your early game struggles into a joke. Stay tuned because I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. From wherever you are watching, welcome in. It's Grey Ghost Gamers and I'm here at Copeland's Camp getting ready to hit the road and show you how to leave the Cascades and bypass Lost Lake and Iron Butte by way of a secret path that'll take us straight to the Crater Lake region. As a bonus, I'm also going to complete seven tasks that will accumulate enough trust points to achieve level one at Wizard Island and allow us to purchase three OP weapons you only get to later in the game. But if I don't pull off a very important hostage rescue, it could derail the whole mission. Are you ready? Let's get started by getting the crappy bike Manny put together and upgrade it with a couple of add-ons before we head out. Now if you don't see the gas tank or Nitrous 1, it's probably just not in your version of the game. So don't freak out, you're not going crazy, okay? For the most part, the strategies that I'm going to show in this video can be accomplished without these add-ons. It'll just be slightly more difficult, but the basic idea behind everything is the same. So, before we take off, we're going to gas up, even though we just got a slightly larger gas tank. I'm not buying the gas at Copeland's. I'm just going to head to a Nero site crash site that's also very close to where Copeland is. At that particular crash site too is a Nero injector that we can enhance Deke's attributes with. I'm more of a stamina kind of person, but whatever attribute you decide to give to Deke, Sir, you, there? you can get it right off the bat. Now we're doing? already going off script by doing that, and yes. on the way there, uh, As we approach the bridge, some, uh, you'll want to keep uh, in mind something. that stump Make that's sure. dead ahead of us. Because depending on sure the, the randomness that the game no, no, is going to throw your no, way, there, you there could the be a sniper and a marauder behind that head. stump. So I'm just going to approach. Uh, Normally they would have attacked by now because your bike is so loud that they'll be alerted to your presence. And in this particular yeah, I guess, playthrough, I I they did not spawn in. So that's good. Now, ideally, you're not even supposed to get to this particular uh, Nero crash site so early in the game because you don't have enough nitrous to make the jump. Because this is intended to be a jump. And you can see that right there is the gap that you would normally have to successfully traverse in order to even get God to the crash right, site. It used to be a part of my camp. I have Nitrous 1, they didn't like the rules stealing, raping, so I'm gonna, for the benefit of you guys, see if we can make it. <laughs> and we're close, but no cigar. Fatality. Yeah. Okay, well, now you know. Nitrous one, not good enough. The fact that he died, though, kind of worries me. I guess maybe what I should do is check on his health. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> well, I didn't really update his health as I finished those tutorial missions when I got here. That's okay. On, These, uh... Next little segments are not going to be too worrisome at this point. And we'll just give it another go. Just keep in mind, potentially, a sniper and a marauder is still going to be up there. And we want to make sure that we don't just bomb down the road and put ourselves in the line of fire. Sterile bandages. 
ointment, something. Yeah, sure, whatever. Like I said, the bike is so loud they would have attacked by now if they were here. Those are, no, no, those are yeah. Henry Burns. You stay there, you rest, okay? I'll, I'll be there as soon as I can. No worries about that. Yes. Um, and now we are going to go to our alternate entrance on the other side yeah, of yeah, the Nero crash site. See what I can find, I guess. As we approach it from this side, you'll see where I'm going. St. John. So we'll just bring up the map to see where we are. So you can see, we're not that far from Copeland's. Not at all. And now, we're going to employ Deke's Legs of Steel to get us up. And you just line straight with that crack in the rock. And you can walk up it. Easy. Now I heard a freak. Yep, there's a freaker. Okay. He's, uh... Very agitated. I'm just tired of listening to your paranoid truth of bullshit. St. John out. Bam. Yeah, there's nothing that's going to be able to reach you up that high. You can easily grab the items that are here without worrying about anything trying to jump you or attack you or any of that stuff. And as you can see over here, yeah, that's the jump. Now, the rock on the other side is higher, which means that it's capable of being jumped, yeah, injector. but not with Let's Nitrous 1. Still works. And here we go with our first injector. As I mentioned, I'm more of a stamina guy. I don't like to use focus because it tends to take away from the authenticity of the game for me. Oh, that's fine. It's it's a superpower that's worth its weight in gold, to be honest. And something I should probably consider using more often in more game playthroughs, uh, given how poor my aim actually is. Which is another reason why I want to go to Wizard Island. Because <laughs> there is a weapon there that I can't actually wait to get my hands on. You normally... Because it's at Wizard Island, it's a late game kind of thing, but I want it now. As you jump off that first ledge, you'll get this warning just to tell you to keep your bike tires parallel to the ground. That way you don't incur so much landing damage. And right here is our first opportunity to make a survivor rescue. Now there's... Quite a few freakers around, and I'm not exactly flush with ammo or weapons, but uh, let's watch how we take care of this. Yeah. Ouch! <laughs> Damn! Boy, that guy's really aggressive. There we go. Okay. Thanks for holding still. <laughs> I love how the animations are meant to freak you out. To have them continue to be coming at you even though you took them down. Yeah, here we go. Okay. This, this is why. <laughs> I'm not going to stick with the bat too long because it takes too many hits with the bat to take this guy out. Ugh. There we go. Jeez. Well, I never promised this was going to be a tutorial about marksmanship or conservation of ammunition. <laughs> this is a bike. It's all about the bike. It's about getting through this stuff and... Oh, here she comes. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to you. Just give it a second. <laughs> I'm going after practically a mini horde here, lady. Just calm your, calm your jets over there. You're in the car. You're fine. Look what I got to put up with. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, is there another one? I hear her. Oh, there. Oh, there she is. Oh, there. Stop. Okay. What do you think, folks? What do you think? Should be easy, right? Oh, that was a headshot. Wow. Okay. Wee. <laughs> oh, oh, don't you turn your back on me. <laughs> I may not have good aim much of the time, but if you turn your back, I, I am not going to be shy about shooting you in the back. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, help this poor woman out. Someone needs help. Let me get you out of there. Hey, hey, it's not safe out here in the shit. I know where there's a camp. There's a camp? What camp? Show me. Where? Well, there's only one right now that we've been at, so... Peaceful Lake. Mark Copeland. It's safe there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, God sent you. I didn't give it up. I was gonna die. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, my God, thank you. Name's Deacon. They know who I am. Keep your head down and run. Yeah, God might have sent me, but he left the aiming part up to me. <laughs> All right, time to go on mission now. Before we head out, just want to show you that from this point on, we're skipping all the main missions and heading over to this ambush camp because it's here. And normally you can get to it just crossing that bridge and going full bore in the front. I'm instead going to choose to go through the rear entrance. Now this road is treacherous. Getting there will be interesting because on this road, just after you cross this bridge, there could potentially be a sniper in a tree. And I don't think we've run into that particular scenario with this playthrough. But if you had just bombed down this road, yeah, you would have been clotheslined because marauders have set up a wire across the road. Now, they haven't... I think I got off the bike fast enough that they didn't hear me approach, but now we're just gonna blow by them. There you go. They're not really carrying anything too dangerous. The sniper would have been just awful. Which is one of the reasons you want to really stay off the main roads. Yes, the paved roads are faster, but you're just setting yourself up for possible ambushes. We just left one possible ambush behind. And whenever you see these overturned vehicles, it's probably a good idea to get off the road again. Now there, that could have possibly been another ambush, but it all depends on the playthrough. It's kind of random. It's either one or the other or both. Fortunately, we only got the one that we easily avoided. Okay, where is it? Here now, I just want to set up the bike to make a quick getaway if necessary. For this particular encounter, I'm not really too worried about it. I was thinking about heading down to that logging camp, clear out those nests, and see more freaks up here. Boozer, no, no, you're gonna get yourself killed. Uh, you gotta wait till you're whole, brother. Uh, I'm over here anyway, so I'll take care of the nest, okay? Yeah, okay. Thanks, Deke. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not taking care of anything. This ambush camp is the priority because it's from here that we'll be able to leave the cascades. Really, in the meantime, while he's here, we're going to pick up this Nero injector. Had all the 
some good shit. Yep. Yeah, that's the stuff. All right. Here we go. Not exactly uh, <laughs> ready to take on an army, but uh, we should have enough to deal with these guys. There's about 15 of them, I think. I can't let any of them get out of here alive. A bunch of rapists and murderers. Coming in the back way, those freakers that are hanging there, the last one is usually the booby trap that they want to spring on you. But it's easy enough to take out. You don't even have to really do too much about that. Now I'm going to crouch before I go through so that when I come out on the other side, I'm already in a crouch position. And I'm just going to duck behind here real quickly as I take stock of the situation and I really want to head to that location it's much better I don't feel as trapped but it is an excellent location to take incoming fire because I'm not very subtle <laughs> not to mention that Let's do this. The moment that they see the dead body or you miss like that, that's it. You, you might as well not even worry about being stealthy anymore. Yeah, they've already been alerted. Time to go. Let's see if I can take him out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Very bad. This is a bad position, though. This is not good. Yeah, this is much better. Whoa! Holy jeez, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I was not expecting that guy. Where'd he come from? I do like this rifle, though. That one's going to be tough. They're not completely out of range. It's just really tough. Only four left. I'm in good shape right now. There's only four. Okay. Patience, grasshopper. Patience. Hello? Dropping off. I think the sniper is still over there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nah, I, I gotta get closer. Pull it back! Listen! Pull back! Here, catch! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Burn, you asshole! Reload! Reload! There we go. Thank you! 
Reload. Yeah, usually the one that's left is the sniper. I don't know why. Can't hear anything, I guess. Oh, and he thinks Deeks has an army uh, coming by or something. Oh, I gotta stay over here. I gotta make sure. You guys are all right over there, right? You're going good, right? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's not screw this up. Shh, don't move, don't move. Chaos clear. Now you know how it feels being on the other end of it, yeah? <laughs> Yeah. Now I left the XP counter yeah, right. on for let's, this playthrough just to demonstrate right with each enemy that's eliminated the kind of point values and experience you can get from the various types of eliminations. Like that yes. one. Here it is. That was like a hundred points for a stealth kill. And then the other ones for headshots. Almost a hundred at ninety-six. With the lowest values, obviously, body shots and whatnot. But they all count towards accumulating points to get you a skill point. And you can see here the fog of war has been lifted wherever we've traveled from the start of the game all the way to where we needed to get the part for the bike. And then back to Copeland's camp. But an ambush camp and its map open up map. the Looks world like a little bit good. by lifting the fog of war. And there we go. We've achieved the maximum points for the first skill point. Increased trust and got some cash at Copeland's, so that'll help. And then we've moved the ambush camp storyline a little bit, which unlocks a craft recipe. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you. It's not here? really all that necessary yeah. to give me plans okay. about how to put nails through a bat. I, I honestly think this is one of the lamer craft recipes, but I guess it has to do with the melee weapons, so they threw it in there. There you go. Now, I'm going to access the skill menus, and we've got the melee, we've got the ranged, but I'm going for survival, because eventually I want to get carry that way. We probably won't see me accomplish that in this playthrough, because you need a lot of skill points to get there. But this one, since I'm using the crossbow for a lot of the first part of this game and the first part of this video, I have to say I find this particular skill quite useful in that you can just retrieve bolts fired at your enemies. Now, the first one I got was getting the plants to display on the minimap because I got that skill by completing a few things in the tutorial section of the game. So if you're wondering, wait a minute, uh, if you're just starting, how did you get that? Don't worry, you're not crazy. I got that during the tutorial portion of the game at the start. If you're only getting this as your first skill, I honestly think this one, Thorn in Your Side, is a good one to have, considering you're pretty much stuck with the crossbow, so why not Make an add-on that's uh, worthwhile. All right. Just going to run back now and get the bike and bring it over into the camp. Yeah, I got to go through this gauntlet of freakers again, but at least there's nothing that's going to attack you this time. It's just going back the way we came. I honestly wish that crawling action that Deke just did as part of essentially a cutscene, I wish that mechanic was in the game. It would be really interesting to have the ability for Deacon to crawl around on his belly like that. But maybe next time.
Yeah, I just realized. Well, might as well. Craft as much as you can so that you can actually pick up items in the world that are laying around. You can only carry so much, hence another reason why during most of my playthroughs I aim to get the carry that weight skill. Now getting to the camp is pretty easy. Just around that bend and across this bridge and up we go. Just gonna get in position. If you don't already have an idea, we are going to be using Deke's Legs of Steel once again. And <laughs> I'm just setting it up here. Now, the weather's turned and we're pretty much near the end of the day. And because we got a new crafting recipe, although it's really not that important on this one, because do you really need to worry about it? No. But I like to loot the corpses of ambush camps after I've acquired a craft recipe. Now, before moving on, we're just going to take a look at the fact that the fire axe is way better than the baseball bat. So I'm going to just upgrade some weapons while I'm here. And by upgrade, I really mean swap out. Even though that rifle I have on my back is handy, the SAF is the weapon of choice for most marauders and ambush camps and most enemies. Until you can have the ability to resupply at a camp, most of your ammo refills can be found on the road and most marauders carry that weapon which means most of the time you'll be able to find plenty of SAF ammo while you're roaming the countryside, let's say. Now these folks really don't have much in the way of useful items on them. It's mostly health related, being able to craft bandages with rags and sterilizers, sometimes you'll get an item or two that uh, can be a surprise and welcome addition to the inventory, but not really. Okay. It also depends on when you loot the bodies. Meaning that if you loot them prior to getting a craft recipe or looting them after you get a craft recipe, which I can neither confirm nor deny, just through observation, I have noted that looting the corpses after you get the craft recipe could potentially yield more items that actually help with the recipe that you just received. Not going to get much probably in the way of the fact that, wow, we got nails that we can put through a bat. <laughs> Sorry, I still can't get over that one. One other note about these tins that are out in the open that can provide ammo is that they're magic because they will provide ammo depending on the weapon that you're carrying. But once used, do not respawn. Now don't take what I have in the weapon wheel as a one-to-one -one relationship with where you might be at in the game. It all depends on how much scavenging and extra stuff you want to do before you actually get into the main game.
but I don't want to be heading out at night and I don't want to be heading out in bad weather. And as you can see, even though we picked up the SAF, it's not in our locker. We can't put it in our locker, but we can actually refill the ammo at a camp. You just can't do it at a locker. There we go. 25 in the clip. Ready to go. Okay. Brother, you're out. <laughs> I, I literally, it's kind of funny that the mission says bug the hell out because that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Deke is bugging out of this whole area and leaving Boozer behind to tend to his own injuries. At least for the time being. We'll be back. I'm just going to close my eyes for a bit. I'm just going to advance time here real quick. Yeah, I just skipped that part. It's daylight now. And as soon as I get back up to the bike... Get ready. Get ready to take notes. Get ready to pause the video and rewind if necessary. Because this is the big moment. And yes, we still have a crappy gas tank, so it's always a good idea to fill up whenever you can. But right there, folks, that bunch of rocks right there. As we use Deke's legs of steel to climb up them, is the exit point from the Cascades. Not only that, but we'll be able to go straight to Highway 97 and Wizard Island. Okay. This isn't exactly the easiest, which is why it's a good idea to make a quick save at this location in order to make the possibly many attempts it will take to get up there. But once we get up there, you can see we're just going to be following the outside of the map. And the cursor will only go so far south. And I can't even set a waypoint. It's just not possible. Like, I can't go further south. And because it's off-grid, I can set a waypoint there. I can set a waypoint even in Lost Lake, covered by the fog of war, but I can't set a waypoint to the areas that we're actually going to go. You ready? So straight toward this crack, a little left, stop at that rock, make a right, and you want to line yourself up to that rock so that you can make a hard left, real left, and try and catch the ledge, not the rock. Otherwise, you'll just tumble back on down. And up and over, and we've made it. Say goodbye to the Cascades and say hello to your direct link to the Crater Lake region. Now we just head through these bushes following this kind of funnel of trees until we get to see that hill and we're just going to go to the top of it so that we can conserve some fuel and use gravity to help us. But here we are at the end of the world. That is oblivion over there. You drive off that, Eddie ain't coming back. <laughs> Give a little boost. Let gravity do a little bit of the work. Still have a crappy gas tank, so we're gonna have to deal with that and keep mindful of that. But as we approach this rock here, You'll want to make your way on top of it. Normally, when you reach a region, you'll see the separation delineated by the funky texture. And there's always a possibility of riding off into oblivion as you try and cross it. But this rock literally is a bridge between both regions. All you got to do is drive and then head on down. 
and we continue the journey. Use the grass texture as a marker to guide you in the direction you need to go. There is nothing that you're going to be able to do with a map that will mark anything to let you know where to go. But if you just follow the texture, and in particular right now, this ridge line, you'll be able to just follow along as you're riding on the outskirts of Lost Lake, which you can barely see because of the weather. I hope it's sunnier where you are, but you can see Mount Thielsen in the background there. And we're just on the edge of being able to use our cursor. Yeah, that's it. So we cannot go any further south with the cursor, and we can't even mark anything. So we've come all the way there, and we're trying to keep the rock edges as a way to try and figure out where we are in relation. But you can see also grooves in the texture that look like lines that kind of point you in the way you need to go. And unfortunately, it's really uphill most of the way. You will be using your gas. You just have to keep an eye on it. Now it's pretty much a straight line. And you can see, again, the lines in the texture there pointing you in the right direction. So just keep going. Don't be afraid of the rock. It's a hologram. It's not really there. It's okay. <laughs> and you just kind of ride on through. Now you can't follow the grass all the way through because it's going to lead you to a ravine. But just follow along. So you can see the ravine right there on the right hand side. It has pretty steep edges. Which is another reason to avoid it. And you can do so by riding along the area that uh, that I just that I just did still got a ways to go though and not really any way of knowing if we're going in the right direction we can't head too far to the left because the game will let us know through an alert that we're leaving the playable area it's a little bit of trial and error camp full of squatters you're the assholes who tried to ambush me and this dialogue is a great indicator of being in the right place and you can see that he's within the detection threshold of the marauder camp and at least here we can coast our way down a little bit and you can see the smoke and the end of the pine trees and when you get to the birch trees you're good don't ride too close though, because they will shoot at you if they get a chance to take a bead on your position. More riding along the edge there. As our goal is to make it to the snowy parts of the mountain. But you can see we're bypassing Lost Lake Iron Butte completely. Now these trees obscure a lot of what's ahead of you and you don't want to go crazy on the acceleration because of that. <laughs> the world just ends and you want to avoid riding off that unless you've made a quick save earlier. Which I would also recommend you do if you're really feeling unsure about your progress make quick saves as often as you feel is necessary. Once you've reached this though, you ride along the edge of the world until you see this clearing. And now that we're in the snowy mountain part of it, once you pass this grove of trees, just ride up the mountain. Find whatever clear path 
will take you up the mountain and just ride along it. Eventually, as you near the top edge, you will see right there at the top, right literally at the top, you'll see the edge of where the texture again shows us the border between Lost Lake and the Crater Lake region. We don't have a lot of fuel left. And if you've pushed the gas too much, you may already have run out of it. Which will make traversing this border a little tricky. But I like to hit the nitrous as soon as the front wheel crosses the threshold. We'll give it a shot. Oh, okay. Don't panic. As long as Deke is still on the bike, it's pretty good. <laughs> I just literally just backed him out and uh, he was thrown clear. But now we're in the Crater Lake region. And it's pretty much a whiteout. <laughs> The fog of war is just really dense and we can't really make our way heads or tails. You can move side to side and yeah, you can mark markers inside the late region now, but that's not going to help us because our exit point is really not that far, but it's right there. And so based on our direction, it's going to be on the left. And I like to use these certain pines that are different than most. They're tall, really tall, and they only have bar uh, snow partially up the bark. But we'll make our way cautiously down here because, oh yes, there is a great marker dead ahead of us. That pylon for the ski lift. Once you find that, head towards it, and immediately behind it is this grove of trees with these tall pines I mentioned with the snow just part way up the trunk of the tree. You can use those trees as markers from here on in. And if you've run out of gas, the good thing is downhill from here. So just keep an eye out for those tall trees, tall pines with the large trunks and they sort of guide you along the way and then when you get to this rock right here we're gonna be making a sharp right turn and there at least now we can sort of see where we've been to be able to have a bearing of where we can go, but that's not going to help. We're pretty close now. We're pretty close to our exit point. And again, you can just make this right turn and go straight down that clearing. And once you make it to this flat part, <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but this is how we are going to enter the region. Just make our way to this point right here. Now, we're near a horde cave, but the horde isn't spawned in at this point in the game. And it's going to be something where you may want to make another quick save in case you get stuck trying to go down that crevice. But in order to avoid it, and I still have a little bit of gas, I'm just going to overshoot it and go right over. Regardless of whether you have gas or not, it's downhill. You can coast easily and just make your way along this path past the feeding ground area over the horde that hasn't spawned in 
And we want to make our way to this house with the blue roof on the left. There is a gas station down there. And I'm just going to take some time to fix up the bike. But marauders are potentially waiting down there. Which is why I stopped at the house. Because there's a gas can right there. And another one in the backyard. If this was a real kind of apocalypse, you'd have to be worried about how much gas is actually in those cans. But they're unlimited. <laughs> they are magically full with as much gas as you need in any scenario. I mean, honestly, I could probably do donuts until I run out of gas again, pick up this can, and fill up the bike all over again. And with the number of places you can obtain gas cans or be at a gas station, it just feels to me like a little bit of a false flag to be quote-unquote worried about your gas situation throughout the game. Just my opinion. But here's the cool thing about where we are in this video. Now, we've got access to Wizard Island right there, and even Diamond Lake. Unfortunately, since we're not supposed to be here, those two camps don't even have the facilities to let us sleep or change the day. We're going to have to find an MMU, and in order to do that, we're going to have to traverse the map pretty much in a straight line until we get to that tunnel. So off we go. Now, we aren't going to travel to the garage and the gas station, but we're going to just take a little bit of a cautious approach and come at it from the backside because up there on the roof are some nice little items that will come in handy in our adventure. And it's always a good idea to get loot whenever you can. So right there, pipe bomb, proximity mine. Now, depending on the gameplay, yeah, there are marauders waiting here. I really don't have any intention of taking them on, but I just want to get this guy. <laughs> One less guy to worry about. And why I'm not too worried about sticking around is because I've got a melee weapon that I want to upgrade. And in order to do that, I have to bypass all this stuff and make it down to the train tracks. Now, I don't think anybody's following me. I'll just keep an eye out. But essentially, we're trading in our axe for essentially, well, for the second best melee weapon in the game. And it's right here. And... Those statistics tell it all. There's only one other weapon that's better than that, and we will have an opportunity to get it. Oh, there's a Marauder. But again, I'm not interested in engaging with those guys. They don't really have a ton of good stuff on them. So I'm just going to use my nitrous to get us across the railroad bridge and over to a Horde Cave. Now you're thinking, Horde Cave? Nah, it's okay. Just like the other one we came into the region with. You gonna follow me? Just curious. I don't see him. Okay. This horde cave is also not occupied. Okay. Uh, I wonder what's in here. But we do have access to. Injector. Good. Thank you. Thank you for uh, finishing my sentence there, Deacon. Ooh. Whoa. Do it. Awesome. We managed to pick up a superior melee weapon and get Deke a little juiced up some more. Now we're going to be going up this road because again we want to make our way to that tunnel and the MMU that's on the other side. 
Along the way, though, we're going to have to worry about more marauders. But if we just follow, just follow the route. I can't, I can't lay anything down, so there's it's not going to show up on anything. Infestation zone. Sure smells so like we'll it. we'll want to avoid those nests. Burn down. Those nests. Clear them out. Yeah, we'll clear them out later. And there's an ambush camp way up there with a sniper. Come back later. Burn out these nests. And if that wasn't dangerous enough for you, there's a possibility of a marauder camp being occupied, but not this time. It's one of those encounters that's random, there or not, depending on your playthrough. Hello, squatter camp. Sons of bitches have been setting up ambushes around here, yeah? Well, I hear freakers. Oh, well, we're not gonna stick around. Leave those guys behind. Nests. I gotta clear them out. I gotta make it safer to ride through here. Now, the nests he's referring to are ones we will eventually be attacking. But they're above us. In this tunnel. They're right there. Literally above my head. Those houses contain the nests. But our priority is the MMU. Because we want to get that up and running as soon as possible. I guess I'll come back here and finish burning this infestation zone later. Now we've got an ambush camp in the distance. We've got this MMU to open up. We've got infestation nests right up there at that house over there. Up there on that ridge are infestation nests. And over there at that bridge section are also some more infestation nests that we will be taking out. So right here in this section of the map alone are four areas that we can eliminate to be able to get the trust points that we need for Wizard Island to be able to purchase the weapons that we want. But first things first, we get the bike in the go ready position and we'll just top up the tank. Now, I want to load up, since I don't have a gun, and I really don't feel like a gun with a suppressor, I really don't feel like taking them down manually by hopping up there. The next silenced weapon that I can use, and you can see right there, Ammo. I can retrieve that bolt, because I acquired the skill to do it. Like I said, very handy. It's not going to happen with all of them. But even if you manage to save a third of your supply, that's already giving you another advantage in the game. All depending on how you take down the enemy with this thing, you could end up retrieving, like I said, about a third or maybe even a half the bolts that you fire. Not a bad trade-off considering that the crossbow is your first early game weapon. That one broke. So that's not retrievable. And the last one right here also broke. Oh well. Can't win them all. And I should take care of that. And now we can get this MMU up and running. Come on, pick it up. Needed this. That should be it. Green 
green lights. Green lights are good. Green lights are good. Excellent. Here we go. Let's see what we got in here. An injector. All right. Nero had all the good shit. Now, by taking this injector and opening up this MMU, we are on our way to developing trust of Wizard Island and start our progress toward a level one to be able to gain access to All right. the weapons. Is that what this shit is? And as we can see there, we have a cot to sleep in, which is not available at Wizard Island. Now we still have a little bit of time. So I'm going to be taking out those infestation zones. Before the sun sets. Now, as usual, you gotta worry about freakers. But we wanna get our bike in a ready zone. Because there's one over there. Now, there's a nest there. And probably a good idea to make sure we're all healed up and get our weapon at the ready. Because there's one in the shack and then this one over here. Why oh, is there a hostage over there? Well, that guy died. That nah, would have been impossible anyway. <laughs> ah, we're gonna take some hits. But that's why we have nitrous. All right. They're all up there and angry, but that's all right. There might be a couple that are a little persistent. How's our, oh, not good. All right, yeah, come on, here we go. Yeah, down you go, Dean, down you go. Okay. Honestly, why do I bother? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Now that is one strategy I really like doing. Just, I know I, it's sort of like playing chicken with these freakers. And this poor one is like, nope, but <laughs> done right, right as soon as he hops. But yeah, I, I usually like to wait and then roll into their attack, which stuns them for a second. And then that way I can really go to town with the melee on them. Might as well uh, check out the area and see what I can loot. Can use this. I'll take uh, ammo. Oh, and there's a band-aid right there. Oh, good. Saves me from having to manufacture it. All right. And also, let's replenish our supply of Molotovs for tomorrow's attack. Useful. 
I don't need boxes of nails. I don't think the scrap though. Alright. Let's get our bike prepped, ready to go. Didn't take up too much, but enough. Ooh, picked up a med kit, that's good. I mean, there's one right there, but that's all right. Uh, starting to, we're starting to roam around now. That's okay. No, I don't want to throw one. I'm almost full, but so I won't waste the tin on that. I'm just gonna close my eyes for a bit. All right, I'm just gonna skip ahead, so we're not waiting through cycles of day to night, because we know what we're doing. We know this is this is the strategy we want. First stop is to hit these infestation nests. And then go after the camp. Uh, murdering drifter camp. I've seen these assholes before, and I gotta take them out. Oh yeah, we are gonna take them out. You bet your bottom dollar there, Deke. Oh, I gotta clear it out. I gotta cut down on the swarmers out here. No, who's he talking to? <laughs> I get, you know, you wanna maybe... Keep track of the tasks Where in mind, is it? but God damn, it's, it's got to be close. But who are you talking to, Deke? Talking to yourself? What has the apocalypse done to you? Wow! Hey, pal, are we excitable this morning? Yeah. What? What the hell was that? <laughs> what? What am I shooting at? Why do I bother? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's just stick to the task at hand, okay? Concentrate. It's gotta be getting close. Yeah, time to light it up. Let's just run out of their line of sight. <laughs> awesome. All right, making good progress. Should be clear now, damn freaker ness. Should be safe to move through here now. And picked up another skill point. That's great. Well, you saw that when the panel came up to show the experience points maxed out at 100%. And now it's time to take care of that ambush camp. But I want to approach them from underneath them. And i uh, got to be careful with the water too. Because in its current state, it's very vulnerable to water damage. We haven't upgraded the radiator yet. That'll only be coming later in the game. Okay, three out of four down. Now we're just going to be wary of that sniper. Because no matter how I try, they seem to always know where I am anyway. Oh. Yep. I heard you. Oh, I heard you. Last minute I heard you, but... They are stealthy. They don't they don't uh, make a lot of noise when they come up to attack you. This is I'm not yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting him to run off, but okay. Well he's not around, let's take care of Wolfie here. Here Wolfie. Why are you running away?
Okay. <laughs> Can't be dead. Yeah. Thought so. Ah, oh, sniper again. Okay. Well. Murdering assholes can't let any of them get out of here alive. That ain't bad for the sun in your eyes, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, come back, come back. I can't even. St oh, shit, almost out. <laughs> you can't even see the bolt sticking out of his body there. Yeah, ammo. Nice. That was a little nice little bonus. Good skill to have. Right. I'm telling you. Okay, now that the sniper's not there, should be able to make our way into the camp relatively easily. Still want to be quiet though. I'm gonna try my luck at this sniper too. Nope. <laughs> wow. Eagle eye sniper there. Well, I guess that's to be expected. Yeah, I was being hopelessly optimistic. Okay. This is one of my favorite spots, to be honest, because all I really got to do is wait for them to come to me. Sometimes it requires a little coaxing. Just got to worry about being flanked, but... Oh, there. Okay, here they come. I like that. <laughs> I'm practically inside the boxcar. Hey, I warned you all, this is not a tutorial about marksmanship, okay? It was about getting you over here. <laughs> yeah, keep on running around. Oh, you bet I'm gonna run around. I ain't brave. Self-sacrifice? The hell with that. <laughs> Whoa! You showed up out of nowhere. It's the second time. She's got to be over there. Oh, there she is. Okay. I was wondering, where the hell... Yeah, you don't have to worry to fall back. I'm not that good. <laughs> you I'm going to take care of. There we go. They're like little bunnies just, just going everywhere. Stop moving. Oh yeah, that was useful. Yeah. Um, 
Oh my gosh! Die already! Thank you! He's just scrambling all over the place. I gotta get out of here. Need this more than you. Taking cover. Okay. Okay. Come on, peek your head. Peek your head. There. I don't even know how many are left. Finally. All right. One more left. Okay. I think it's the sniper that's just over here. I seem to have the most luck with this. Chaos clear. Now you know how it feels being on the other end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, bunker time. Well, we look like the type to have an underground bunker. Yeah. Here's the hatch. Yeah. No, you had one. I'm going to find the map, and there we go. The two infestation zones are cleared out, the MMU opened up, and we finally captured this ambush camp. Okay. That should take us to more than halfway to reach trust oh with Wizard Island. Map. Yes. And see that in a sec. So more XP by clearing this thing out. Yep, more than halfway now. Oh, well, that's getting close. And we've got stamina cocktails. Got papers, no, a That's a craft crafting. recipe, yeah. which works perfectly for my gameplay. So let's add that skill point. Which really, for the purposes of this gameplay, is not all that relevant to the mission at hand, which is to really get the trust points to be able to acquire the weapons from Wizard Island, but, you know, every little bit helps. And you can see by opening up the ambush camp, we've now cleared Fog of War to another portion of the map, which will remain clear if you were to return to this uh, area during the regular missions or normal gameplay. You've already done it, already cleared. So that's all good. And now that I've acquired a stamina cocktail, I'm going to go back out now and just quickly loot these guys, all the corpses, to see if there's anything they have on them that will contribute to my ability to craft them. That's kind of being optimistic. But you never know. Now that's a good location to resupply on some things up there. And I'm just going to head back. I know there are a couple of bottles over here. Yeah, I'm all good for the health side of things. Where are they? Oh, there you go. Yes. Again, it's a good point to just check on your inventory, whatever you can craft, craft, because then that way you are then able to accumulate items in your inventory that you can carry as you find them.
and a nice big bonus is because this particular camp had a heavy you actually get one of the more impressive weapons of the game without even needing to purchase it MG45 that's a decent horde killer ooh a pipe bomb that's a good that's a good find I have a feeling most of these folks are just going to be carrying items that uh, will aid in healing. Yeah, sterilizers and rags. I missed one. No, oh, where are you? No, oh, nope. Where the hell? Behind me? No, oh, right. <laughs> right there. Yeah, scrap. That's another thing, scrap. Which, when you're dealing with the crossbow and you require both the sapling and scrap to construct bolts, again, early game, not a bad thing to be able to get off these uh, courses. And another reason why I like. Ooh, frag grenade! Oh, yes, I'll take that. That's a nice bonus. Uh, I was just saying, another reason why you want to get carry that weight is to double up on what you can carry, both in terms of the items that you can use, as well as the resources you can pack away into uh, Deke's magic bag there. So now I'm just going to get my bearings on how we're going to get to Wizard Island from here. Since we can't move up and down, but we can go to that road, maybe. Yeah, well, actually it's more across and then down. Yeah, right there, down. Actually down, straight south. Straight south. Yeah, right where that cabin is. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> so we've got four down. We've got the two infestation zones, the MMU and the ambush camp. So that gets us a little bit more than halfway. The last three things we got to do. Rescue a hostage. And go open up an MMU and an ambush camp in the same area. So that's a two-for-one special. And that will work very nicely. But we want to visit... Well, considering it's on the bottom left part of the map, so way over there, we just going through Wizard Island accomplishes two things. One, the shortcut. And two, by visiting the camp, the hostage that we'll eventually rescue can be sent here to add to the trust. So, just to show you what we're going after. Corporal, what do you need? Sarge. Hey, you. I haven't seen you around here before. Name's Jacob D'Angelo. At level Everybody one, at Wizard Island, we can get John, Deacon. So, uh, a primary, come a sidearm, and a special. You got it, pal. You need guns? I got guns. If I don't have it, it was never made, you know what I mean? Well, Great. Before I take Keep off. In mind. We can restock, rearm the weapon that we're carrying. Oh yeah, upgrade the hell out of that thing, right? <laughs> and that's all I'm going to need cuz huh? the uh -huh. ambush camp can be taken out with Purple. one shot. And if that surprises you, well, there's a reason why one shot works. And you'll see when we get there. Because that ambush camp in MMU is in a very unique location. Look out, honey. Coming through. <laughs> Careful now.
Now here's hoping. Because there are two locations that the hostage rescue can take place at. One of them is really close and fairly easy to take care of. And the other one is a little bit harder. So hopefully we'll luck out and get our hostage rescue situation close by first. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. And I'm going to check on it right now. Oh, yes. So that individual up there on the cliff's edge is somebody we need to rescue. Now this bike is really loud, so it's unlikely I'll be able to sneak up on that marauder. Yeah. Gotta pull back. Oh, yeah, nice bunch of rapists, thieves, and murderers. What you doing out here, huh? You looking for your next easy target? There we go. Someone needs help. Help! Help! I need help! Let me get you out of there. You're not gonna make it out here. I know where there's a camp. Where? Where? I'll go! I'll go! And this is why we visited Wizard Island, because now we can send them there. Okay, uh, look, head to Crater Lake. There's a militia camp on Wizard Island. You gotta find Colonel Garrett. Thank you so much! I thought I was gonna die in there! Yeah, let them know it was Deacon St. John. They know me. Okay, keep running. Stay out of sight. Excellent. I can't tell you how happy I am to have been able to take care of that particular task right there just makes it so much easier the other location is a little farther up but there would have been quite a few more marauders to deal with and if you don't take care of it fast enough the marauders might end up actually killing the hostage Fuel. yeah no you don't uh, yeah <laughs> Sometimes I press the circle button too early and Deke ends up paying homage to the bike. <laughs> All right. That's where we can pick up the gas can and you can see the bridge where we rescued the hostage. And even better, the MMU and ambush camp is right there. The last two tasks, both in the same place. And will be able to take care of it with one shot. In the meantime, along the way, as we ride up to this particular house, crawling with newts, and there are some freakers around, but I'm just gonna make a mad dash, hop over, through the window, <laughs> get to the damn thing. Good. Now they can still a come and attack you while you're doing this. Yeah, that's but stuff. as soon as you're done, get out. Whoa, I think there was a freaker right there. <laughs> yeah, he's coming after us. Now we've got Cryer's Nest that we got to worry about. Oh no, here we go. Yeah. As soon as you hear the Cryer you give out a yell, you're not in. You're not going to get away from it. Even with nitrous, I wasn't able to get away from it. But now we're rolling up on the secondary location where a hostage situation would have appeared had the bridge side encounter not spawned in. And it's very close to the ambush camp in the MMU. I'm just going to, yeah, that, that crow took a real big chunk out of me. Oh, well, we can heal up. Grab some loot. There's another camp down there that potentially could be marauders waiting for you to drop by. But it's all random. 
and yeah pretty close you can see in the far left so that was the house where we got the injector and that's the bridge and cliff location for the rescue and then down in the corner there the MMU and the ambush camp but what's really cool about this location as well as potentially being a hostage rescue if you happen to have it spawn in is you actually can get the superior mace here so if you've used it up you can just swap it out and grab a new one but even better is just right over here at this log pile is actually the best melee weapon in the game the superior metal axe right there so it's a good option if you already have the superior mace and you want to swap it out but I mean the superior metal axe is right here might as well all right sun's going down but we are going to go for it because the MMU is right there and the ambush camp doesn't matter either one we'll clear them both and we'll have a place to sleep and not worry oh, about attacking these are the assholes freaks who've been ambushing the roads night. around here and this is what I mean when we can clear this entire area with one shot as far as taking out the marauders goes now well, there's some freakers over there but I think we I gotta clean got by the them Bunch and this is why thieves, I, I want the suppressor guy. because these dumb marauders are completely oblivious to the fact that right over there in that tunnel is a minor horde and that explosive device will help call them out so there you go literally one shot and now all you have to do is sit back and watch the action and just worry about those freakers over there and see if they're going to come over but there they go <laughs> by the time you've even taken a look they've already taken out five and it's so wonderful that the marauder heavy is using his mg45 to just call them over Because as we know, Freakers love sound. And now that they're almost down to the end of it, okay, one left. I want to head over. That's it. You're done. How do you like that, huh? Being ambushed, you like that? Sneak in. <laughs> get to the top of this. Because now it's time to take out this mini horde. But right there at that truck, hidden from view, is another explosive box. The frag grenade will take out a lot of them. But here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, they're all together. <laughs> bye bye, horde. Nice. Now that folks, is best case scenario. Not a lot of stragglers. We managed to get the entire mini horde over there. That's maybe a 1 in 10. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's the best possible outcome I could have hoped for. And even better is the fact that the horde taking out all the marauders for you leaves an MG-45 just lying on the ground. I'm going to just get the... bike into 
ready go exit scenario. Yeah, might as well uh, take out the speakers and get the MMU up and running. No need to waste a gun and a suppressor when the crossbow will do just fine. Because the resources for the crossbow are more readily available than the suppressors. Suppressors can be found under the hood of larger vehicles, depending on which suppressor you're trying to go for. And that speaker got blown out by the explosion, so that helped. Whoa, what's that? Oh, that scared the hell out of me. I didn't know what the hell that was. Just swinging around. <laughs> Almost there. One more to go. This MMU requires Damn a fuse. It. Fuse blown. And I'm just going to run over to show you where it is. Right in this crate. Feels, yeah. So here on the map is right next to the tent, so you can get your bearings as to where to look for it. Yeah, there's a freaker that snuck in. Let's see if we can get that one. Oh, yeah, awesome. So with a pistol, I can barely hit the broadside of a barn, but. <laughs> With Deke moving and a moving target, do it. I get a headshot. I don't know. That's <laughs> ah, just a fluke. I doubt if I could repeat that more than once. Oh, here we go. So we get our infinite gas can to power our Good. infinitely operable generator. Lost it. <laughs> Here we go. That's just a minor. One one little thing they added. Oh, this one's broken, so now you got to fix green it. Green lights are good. Green lights are only good. Yeah, and uh, this is an infinitely running, a perpetual motion machine, because that generator will never run out of gas. Like, if anything, right. I think that would have been more... Go of an interesting game mechanic that could have been added to the to the to the game is to Another come back and check good to be able to see if the MMU required fuel again and there we're so close now Better living through chemistry. And we're going to resolve that situation by just visiting the bunker. Yeah, I'll come visit the bunker. I'll visit the bunker first. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't see him. I like that. Roll, stun, eliminate. <laughs> there it is. Down the hatch. Which is easy enough if you've only got maybe a couple of them to deal with. Of course, if you had the mini horde, I don't know if it'd be all that effective. But really, this is this is the moment that. Uh, that all this work has gone into is for this. A map. Looks like they marked it up good. And there we go. Level one at Wizard Island achieved. All we got to do now is head back 
and claim our prize. Another recipe. What Smoke do we got bomb. Here? How to craft the... Okay, yeah, okay. To be honest, that is one of the more useful craft recipes to get because the smoke bombs are really effective because they'll essentially stop enemy pursuit in their tracks. If you're being chased, wolves especially, throw a smoke bomb down and they'll be paralyzed for a few seconds, which will allow you to get in them and take them out. Now, Crater Lake only has the two ambush camps. Therefore, once you've successfully taken them over, the fog of war is lifted on the entire Crater Lake region. All right, we've got another skill point. But what I'm waiting for, yeah, that's it. Confirmation of achieving level one trust at Wizard Island. Before we head back, and grab those weapons, I'm going to make a slight adjustment in processing the skill point because even though I have the best melee weapon in the game, you can only get that here in the Crater Lake region. So if we're going back to the Cascades, I'm going to choose the Field Repair skill at this point because that will allow me to now use scrap to repair the weapon when I get back to the Cascades. And as long as I keep an eye on the health of that weapon and be able to repair it as needed, I should be able to use it for the rest of the game. Oh, I'm just gonna close my eyes for a bit. Yep, time to go Betty by Deke. We like doing our adventures during the daytime. Fewer enemies to worry about. Unless, of course, you're a nocturnal person and you feel like a challenge, by all means, head out there at night. <laughs> You'll definitely have a few challenges to encounter, that's for sure. All right. Now, we got that smoke bomb as a craft recipe, which now gives us the ability to pick up gunpowder, which we weren't able to do before we went in there. And this location on the map is actually an excellent source of gunpowder. I think there's a total of five at this location. Combining that with carry that weight. Oh, an attractor. Oh, that'll make up for what we used. Nice. What's over here? Oh, yeah, that's the freaker that we took out the night before. All right, let's loot these folks and see what we can get. Again, most of the time, it's going to be sterilizers or rags or scrap based on the weapons we currently have. Sometimes they dynamically change depending on the arsenal you happen to be carrying at the time. Because again, they're not going to necessarily give you too many overpowered weapons early in the game or overpowered items like an attractor or an attractor bomb. But on occasion, they could yield something useful, which is why it's always a good idea to loot these guys, to loot the corpses. Oh, med kit. Yeah, again, like I said, mostly, mostly health related items. All right, how many more of these guys am I going to look for? There's one more. Oh, there's a Freaker. He managed to sneak in. What the hell? Dude. Roll your way to victory. Oh, there's a nice little congregation out there. I'm looking for breakfast, I suppose. Meaning Deke. <laughs> Okay, where is that MG-45? There's a bolt. And there's the heavy.
honestly, the heavy does drop the MG45. But I'm thinking now that because I because I decided to take a nap, I think the weapon actually despawned because it would be right here. He'd be carrying it, and I don't see it anywhere. Okay, well that was a tactical error, but uh, again, for your particular playthrough, if you want to get an MG45 relatively easily, this is the best location to come get it. Because you've got that mini horde in the tunnel, and with the one shot of that explosive box, they'll come charging out and take care of the marauders for you. It is a little bit hit and miss. What you witnessed in this video was like the best case scenario as far as the horde actually taking out all the marauders. Because sometimes the marauders don't start firing at them. They just try and headbutt them with their weapons. Yeah, there we go. Come on, you should know by now. <laughs> but yeah, I think the MG45 despawned when I went to bed. Now, oh, well, that's unfortunate. All right, we're out of here. Let's get back to Wizard Island then. Not worried about the MG45 because I've got even better weapons waiting for me. Now we're just gonna boot scoot and boogie out of the way. Make sure the freakers that were congregating next to the gate there don't uh, see where I went. And then just heading over here, we're going to pick up one more injector before we head back home. I think I'm all right. They're not. They're not following. Good. Stamina, it is. Ooh. Ooh. That'll do it. Very nice to have another injector so close to the MMU. You get two injectors relatively quickly. Yeah, you guys just rah, 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 all you want. We're out of here. Going back to Wizard Island should be fairly uneventful. Of course, those are famous last words. Oh, nice deal. Oh. Hey, no siree, not today. What the hell? You had your meal with the deer over there? Go chase them. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can avoid the criers this time. Make a wide berth. All right. Woo! Just gonna coast. Save gas when you can, especially with this crappy ass tank. Almost there. This is very, very cool. For just a few days, a few in-game days of effort, not only are you going to help Boozer out a hell of a lot, but you're going to have some outstanding weaponry to deal with the early game missions that await once we return to the Cascades. We'll definitely make it back to the MMU, the volcanic one, the one we first arrived at.
pick up some fuel there. And then there's a little bit of fuel just before we leave this region and head back to the Cascades. Ready, set, and dive! <laughs> Gets me every time. Love it. So you can see there, level one trust, Wizard Island. Hey, Gorko, as like. Oh, it's about to get a hell of a lot better, my friend. A hell of a lot better. Hey, D, I got a question for you. So here well, we go. East Coast City boy doing all the way the hell out here. Now that replaces our SAF. Uh, Serve with the guy from Long Island. Bye bye nine Since millimeter. No shit, right? Let me tell and you. Hello, and hello, horde killer. Down, I used to run this website called You Need Guns, I Got Guns dot com. So now oh, that's all full. We even have so that's access to you before you had a you had a cable show. Uh, suppressors. Used to watch it uh, back in the day. Which yeah, you actually man, need level yeah, one. Damn right, I did. I used to Back at country, Copeland's you know, camp to get them. Gun shows, flea markets, shit like that. I guess this is about as out of the way as it gets. I guess it isn't that, huh? And now checking our locker, we now have a primary weapon that we can use, sidearm. This is a fantastic little weapon, by the way. I don't got all day. Well, I do, but still, come on. <laughs> And we still have the crossbow, if we ever need another silenced weapon when we run out of the suppressors. So it's available at any time now. Hey, don't be that way. Sorry to purchase and run, but I got what I want. Hey, Crawford, you stay out of trouble, you hear me? Stay out of trouble? I want to get into trouble. That was the whole purpose of coming here and grabbing all these weapons. Of course, now the purpose is to lead you back to the Cascades. And essentially, we're going to be following the same route back as we took to get here. Now, with those two ambush camps eliminated, the fog of war has been lifted on the whole Crater Lake region. And seeing as it's only 11 o'clock in the morning, we're going to make a beeline for the exit. <laughs> We're heading for the exits now. I'm not sure how bad Boozer is suffering since I don't think he was meant to be left for a long period of time by himself, but I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Gunshots, where the hell did those come from? Anyway, I'm very anxious to try out these new weapons. Let's see. Ah. The 9mm is normally what you're carrying when you're going after these, so let's try it. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, here we go. Got him cornered. Oh! Oh my goodness! I think that was a hell of an upgrade from that 9mm. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely a huge improvement over carrying that 9mm. Yeah, I might as well uh, get, get some meat while I'm at it. Because eventually there's going to be a mission where where Boozer's going to be hungry and he's going to want some venison. Now where the hell did the other one go? I think I killed... Yeah, they, there he is in the distance. That's ah, too far. I'm not going to go back. I'm sure we'll be able to get a couple more along the way. Gas tank is at 43%, but we're close enough to the MMU that will make it no problem and be able to fuel up and get out.
This area is pretty much clear now and will stay clear. If slash when uh, you decide to come back in your own gameplay. Or if you just follow the story along by the time you get back here, it'll be ready. You'll already be at level one. Yeah, there's a there's our pal. There's a friend. Shit. Let's show him what we got over at Wizard Island. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> oh, this makes up for a multitude of sins in comparison to my aiming with the 9mm. <laughs> Yeah, Boozer, keep your shotgun. I don't feel too bad now. Because that shotgun during the tutorial missions was very handy. And, uh, yeah, this little stubby definitely makes up for the loss of that. I'm just going to quickly scavenge around, see what, uh, see what else I can take. No, it's a, yeah. Well, well, we can craft one thing. Anything else? Nope. No. That was nice that we were able to pick up that tractor from the Marauder at the camp that we used it at. A one-for-one -one trade for that. All right, we'll just take one last check. 12.42, excellent amount of time. And back to the Horde Cave we go to get out of Dodge. At some point, you even get used to not having markers on the map just by the familiarity of the routes that you're taking. So I tend not to worry about it, but just using these maps for demonstration purposes. Obviously, for anybody who's new to the region, trying to get a lay of the land, but most of the roads and routes are fairly straightforward. Now, we are easily going to avoid the sniper, but I think we're going to be just interrupting these people's dinners. Oh, yeah. They weren't there before when we first rode through the tunnel, but uh, a little ornery now, but leave those people far behind. Don't really need to engage with them. Oh, dinner, anyone? Ah, <laughs> oh, I think, no, like, let that go. Yep, bye, it's okay. I think we're far enough away that the Marauders aren't going to be coming after us. Yeah, they're not going to bother. There are a couple of items on the road here. Is that deer? That deer is long gone. Long gone! Now it's a short hop, but given the gas tank on this thing... Yeah, look at that, 78%. It doesn't take much to use up fuel. Don't have to ride too far to use up a hell of a lot of fuel. So while we're going to deal with the situation of having this size of a gas tank until we can improve it later in the game, just keep on looking for any fuel supplies that are available. And in days gone, let's be honest, one of the things that may have been a little bit more scarce as fuel, but it, it really isn't that scarce in the world. It's just really annoying to have to deal with trying to find fuel sources pretty much top of mind all the time. Yeah, I hear you screaming, but you're too busy chasing deer. Okay, this is it. We will be engaging Deke's Legs of Steel. I'm just going to check. Where are they? Ah, they're too far away. They'll never catch up. Okay. But, 
as usual, I would always suggest you make a save because this could be tricky. It may not work on the first time, but the idea is, is as you make it to the top here, trying to get into that crevasse to get by, you don't want to hit it dead on. You want to get that invisible ledge just to nudge your front wheels over and then you can make it up. No problem. There you go. Obviously, a little practice here and there will get you there and you can see the route we took from Wizard Island across to the MMU and then back to where we are now, which is where we came into this story. The good thing about the return journey is that at least now it's marked on the map so you can see roughly the route that you took to get here and you can refer to it on the way back but we want to try and keep our eye on the markers that we use to get in here like those trees and turning left at that rock and then that next clump of trees with the tall cedars with the very distinct trunks and now just looking for that ski lift pylon there it is and now we're going to look for an opening to head toward the border area it's kind of arbitrary like as long as you're heading in this general direction you can zigzag all you want but you really want to be careful as you go past the edge because the border there we go that texture change there and I'm just gonna scooch on over here a little bit just to get a better view of it there you go all right despite having the nitrous it's a very distinct possibility to end up in oblivion and if you don't have it you could try various methods of either just walking it across gliding across one of those will work and as we look here at the map we're probably can maneuver a little bit more to the left but at this point as long as we're hitting the train line we should be good i like to back up and as soon as the front tire crosses the threshold hit the nitrous see what happens whoa okay <laughs> and now we just worry about being on the brakes to be honest we're going to conserve quite a bit of gas I think yeah so now it's just a matter of trying to remember how we got here and find all the pathways and again one of the reasons to not go crazy on the accelerator is like Riding literally on the edge of oblivion. Yeah. But that is a marker. This is a way you can remember how to get to and fro. The challenge of getting back, in my opinion, is a little bit harder. Because everything's in reverse. So you might recognize certain things as you're traveling to Wizard Island. But then trying to get back to the Cascades, it's like, where was it? It wasn't on the left, on the right? I don't know. But these birch trees are a good uh, example of markers that you can use. Ambush camp should be right there, but they're not putting up their uh, bonfire. Don't see the smoke from the bonfire. So we're pretty much on track here. Just looking at that big ravine ahead of us. So we'll try and maintain a decent line so we don't fall off the edge. And there we can see the open area that we traveled down the last time. So let's use the bike to travel up this time. Now we can't go too far to the right because otherwise we will end up leaving the playable area 
but we're pretty close to the ravine here, so yeah, I don't think we have to worry about that right now. We're good. Oh yeah, we're so close to that ravine, but I'm just gonna take a wide berth here. Now, we'll want to stick close to where the grass line is, if we can find it. Ah, there it is. And there's that rock. That's not the rock we use, but we... Yeah, there it is. So, coming up to the holographic rock. <laughs> just go right on a collision course. Just go right for it. It's all good. Whee! And out the other side. And now this part should be fairly straightforward. And again, it was uphill when we were getting to Wizard Island, but it's downhill now, so... Tons of uh, fuel savings in the works here. Yeah, there's the ridge line. And oblivion. <laughs> Just keep following the contours. the border between the grass and there's the rock dead ahead of us that we came across the first time. It was easy enough to approach from the other side and we dropped off pretty wildly on this side so I would say make a game save at this point as well. Just a quick save in case you have trouble navigating the rock but it's all about Deke's legs of steel, to be honest, versus speed. So there you go. Once you get there, and then the texture will change, and poof! Magic! Yeah, as long as you go straight along here, you're fine. We're very nearly back to where we started, folks. with plenty of daylight left, actually, which is surprising. But well, there it is. That's it. That's where we came in. The road to Wizard Island. And there you can see now, now we can move the cursor everywhere because we're back north. And it stops dead as we try and go south, as usual. But just a little ways back to the rocks that we climbed to get here. That's somewhere, there we go. That's it. Use the trees as a funnel to guide you. Yeah, and I'm making another game save because God knows I can probably crash the bike. Yep. There's only that one small area that you can get in and out of, because otherwise there's those invisible walls. Here we go. That's how to do it. Yeah, just back up and just ease on down, Deke. And there we go, folks. Round trip from the Cascades to Wizard Island getting the level one trust, and picking up some truly overpowered weapons, especially for this point in the game. And it's all thanks in part to Deke's Legs of Steel. All right, now that you've made it back with the arsenal in hand, the forthcoming mission should be putty in your hands. But if you were thinking about all the extra goodies you missed out on by leaving early, start with this video and see just how OP Deke can really be. Thanks for watching. Be good to yourself and others you meet out there. Catch you next time.